And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. There is a need for light in the midst of the prevailing darkness on the earth today that will shatter the power of darkness. And that light is the word of the living God. The vessel of the living God, Bishop Abiola Idowu, brings you the light. A new song coming to you. A new song. Through the word of God that will bring you to total fulfillment in life. No more sickness, disease, failure, guilt, condemnation, and affliction in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, welcome Bishop Abiola Idowu. Praise the Lord. What a joy to be together with you again tonight on this hour of dominion. I'm so excited because each time the word of God is declared and is received by faith, something happens upon your life, either physically, spiritually, financially, emotionally. And the essence of God's word is to create something inside of you. God and his word, they are one. And each time God speaks, it is God himself reaching out to you to deliver you, to lift you up, to establish you, and to give you the joy where everybody thinks it can never happen. So I want you to listen very carefully tonight to the word and the word will transform you. But before we go into the word, let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much in the name of Jesus because of your love and your power, your mercy that endures forever. Thank you for our viewing audience tonight, wherever they are. Thank you because of the situation that you are already solving. Thank you for the yokes that you are destroying, the power of darkness that you are frustrating. Receive all our praise in the name of Jesus. As the word comes forth, Lord Jesus, do that only you can do. And we will return all the glory and praise to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to welcome you one more time. I want you to have this understanding at the back of your mind. God's willingness to heal the sick and to deliver the oppressed is the reason that he spoke about it in the word. Now, there is no reason to put anything about healing and deliverance in the word of God if God is not ready to do something about it. There is enough provision by God to make sure that everyone in the kingdom is healthy. Everyone in the kingdom is not suffering in the hand of the wicked one. Now, I was looking into this in James chapter 5. In verse 13 to 15, the Bible says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. That's for prayer. Is any merry? He said, Let him sing psalms. And he said, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And what happened after that? He said, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Now we saw that it is the air that I pray, but it is God that heals. Now, because in the original program of the Almighty, God has made provision for healing. I don't care whether the doctor call it terminal. I don't care whether the, the feeling looks as if you are not going to, to breathe the, the next breath. Now, those are just what the enemy is trying to bring along the way and just uh, give you a, 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 a kind of a mindset that your case is out of touch. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Now, listen, what I have discovered in the, from, 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 the, from the scripture is Whatever you believe God for, whatever you believe God can do according to what he has said concerning himself is what he will do for you. Now, faith in coronavirus is what is making it to spread because people believe so much in this coronavirus. And let me tell you, that's the faith because they have never seen this virus before, but they believe in it. They believe so much in this virus to an extent that the virus was getting strength every day. The more you have faith in what you are thinking or what you are hearing will determine the strength of that thing in your life. Nobody have ever seen those virus and yet people are running everywhere. Now people are, now listen, they've not seen it. Now God is saying the fact that you have not seen me does not mean I'm not with you. Now see what I have spoken. 
by my word. The, when the unseen is believed because God said it, you put the sin under the control. When the unseen is observed and believed because it is God that said it, you put all the things that you can see under control. If you know and understand the power of the price paid on Calvary, you will know how weak sickness and disease are as touching your life. All help put together, all power of this of sickness, disease, and virus put together can never stop you because the price paid was to put him, put those things under subjection. Jesus Christ reigned over everything, and when he was going, he put you and I in place. So I want you to just begin to release your faith to the truth today. I want you to begin to believe God, because tonight I am trusting the Lord that the glory of the Lord will come upon you, because Jesus Christ has been smiting, Jesus Christ has been striking, Jesus Christ was, was bruised for your sins, he was, he, was, he was beaten mercilessly, so that the grip of sickness and disease will not be over you again even already paid for to put sickness on you we have to remove the strife from the body of Jesus which is practically impossible so I want you to listen tonight because there are questions that will be coming that is going to steer something inside of you and sometimes because of traditional religion you've been deceived about what God is thinking about you. You cannot know what God is thinking about you because somebody says something. You can only know what God is thinking about you because he said it in his word. So let's go into the word today and your life will never remain the same again. There are people here today, they are going to ask questions. And please, take your pen and paper. Let's go to school of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, Shalom. Wow, what a word that is able to shape your destiny and put you where you really belong. Now, I want you to listen very carefully to this question because it's going to spring something inside of you and faith will be born. First question, please. Bishop. Yes. God is the, the almighty, mm -hmm. the God of love and mercy. Yes. Why didn't he prevent sickness and disease from destroying his children completely? Oh, wow. Um, that's a very powerful question yeah, because we all know that God is a God of love, is a God of mercy. Now, why is he not, not preventing his children from being sick? Now, the truth of matter is, he has. He destroy everything called sickness and disease, but many times people don't know it. People don't receive it. And if you don't receive what God is giving, it's not automatic. We have to have that understanding. Let me explain to you the way this thing operates. Now, the power behind sickness and disease is the devil. It's not just the food you, you ate. It's not just what you inherited from your parents. Now, the foundation for sickness and disease is Satan. It's the devil. Now, let me show you from the scripture so that you can see how God already cleared off this issue of sickness and disease that majority of believers have not been able to tap into. In Luke Gospel, chapter 13 and verse 16, the Bible says, It said, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years, be loosed from his bond? on the sabbath day now we saw that this woman was bound not by arthritis but by satan jesus Christ was able to identify the power behind that affliction maybe somebody just uh, saying well uh they said is a uh, is sugar uh, level they say is a uh, blood pressure they say is cancer now that is what the medical could read the Thing that cannot be seen under the microscope is Satan. He's the one behind it. Now, we saw in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, the Bible says, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth and is going about, he said, doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. We saw the one that is oppressing the people. 
is called the devil or Satan. Now, the Bible now said in Hebrew chapter 2 and verse 14, is that for as much children are partakers of flesh and blood, he said himself two parts of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So we saw from the scripture that Satan has been destroyed as far as your health is concerned. But God's children have to believe it. You don't have to believe in the symptoms. You don't have to believe everything that you have seen on the paper. You have to believe what the word of the Lord said concerning it. Because if you are not aware that the yoke has been broken, you can still be playing slavery when God already set you free. A lot of believers are using traditions and uh, religious mindset to live their life. And it's not going to work that way. That's why it's so easy for a believer to be praying for healing instead of receiving their healing. It's so possible for a believer to be begging God to heal them when God already healed them by the stripe of our Lord Jesus Christ. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24 is so clear. And I want you to listen very carefully to this. He said, who is own self, his own self, bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we, being dead to sin, huh, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, you are not going to be healed. You were healed. So your healing is in the past tense. Now, if the sin took Jesus to the cross and he died for sin, the same death for sin is the same death meant for sickness and disease. That the same death that was used to cover your sickness and disease. So you have every right to rebel against cancer. And tell yourself, cancer will never enter into this body because Jesus Christ paid for it. Now, I know that you as a child of God, if somebody tells you right now that you are a sinner, you are going to hell, you will begin to be angry. No, I'm a child of God. My sins have been forgiven. I'm not the righteousness of God in, in Christ Jesus. Now, the same response should be when somebody is trying to put sickness or disease upon you. You have every right to say, no, I am saved because my price has been fully paid. When he died on the cross, it's not for sin alone. Just as he died for sin, he died for sickness and disease. And you have to take it by declaring it. You are not praying to God to heal you no more. You are going to God to take what belongs to you. Father, I thank you because my price has been paid. Therefore, I command you, you sickness, you pain in my body, to live right now. You can't rebel against the word of God. The word is true. I refuse to take this pain. I refuse to take the diabetes. It's, no, it's not mine. In the mighty name of Jesus, when you begin to put your feet down, based upon the price that has been paid, you put the devil on the run. And I want you to start practicing that right now. Don't allow these things to stay in your body. God is against it. I want you to be against it also. God bless you. Next question, please. Hi, Bishop. Yeah, I'm blessed. Thank you for the word. Mm. My question is, the Bible says, yeah. is any afflicted, mm. let him pray. So, and the child the father loves, he chastens. Yeah. In Hebrews 12, 6 to 8. Yeah. Does not that mean that God allows sickness and diseases to teach us a lesson in order to correct us? Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much for that question. Now, now I have seen over the years that that scripture has been taken out of context. And people don't really know what God is saying when he mentioned that uh, it is the, the son that the father loved that is chastised and uh, is scourged every son that he received. Now, there is nowhere in the scripture where the Lord said he is going to use sickness and disease to train you. I want you to get that one. Nowhere is, I mean, because I, 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 I have discovered that when people don't understand the truth, the enemy takes over and he put, I mean, unnecessary 
affliction into their life. Now, what the scripture was saying by the word chastening is the, word, is the same word as training. Now, training has nothing to do with sickness and disease. Now, let me just look into that scripture for, for, with us. In Hebrew chapter 12, verse 6 to 8, it said, For whom the Lord loveth is chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Okay? He said, But if we without chastisement, we are of all our particles, then are ye bastards and not sons. Now, there is nowhere there that the Bible says the chastening of the Lord is sickness and disease. The word chastening means to train just as a father we want to train his children or a mother want to train, train I mean, our children. Now, you don't train your children with sickness. You don't just say, well, now, I want to train you. So you have to have some air day for, for five days. No, you don't do that. So people think when the Bible says God scorch people, they think it's sickness and disease. No, God trained us and instruct us by his word. He's chastening us by his word, correcting us. And sickness and disease are not a tool in the hand of God. God don't have sickness and disease. Why should he be getting the enemy to help him train his children? Now, if God have to use sickness and disease to train us, then God is employing the devil to do his job. And he will never do that. He will never, ever do that. I saw in the scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You see that one? All scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. And it is for correction. Sickness is not for correction. If sickness is in your body, it is the devil that put it there. God is not using sickness to teach you nothing. Hey. I wish somebody is getting what I'm talking about because when you have a wrong doctrine about how God sees sickness and disease, you will put yourself directly in the hand of the wicked. God hates sickness. He hates disease such the same way he hates sin. The way God reacts to sin is the same way God reacts to sickness and disease. That is why the same price paid for sin is the same price that was paid for sickness and disease. So you have to deal with sickness the way you will deal with Satan. When you look into the scripture, the Bible says in Mark chapter 16, verse number 17, it said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Is another? Now, it said they shall speak with new tongues. Now, sickness and disease have to be dealt with the same way. You take the name of Jesus and you cast him out. In the name of Jesus, you foul pain. I cast you out in Jesus' mighty name. Just as you believe that your sins and your, I mean, and your, and your iniquities have been forgiven without any feeling. The same way. Declare it. Let God take it over from there because that is what he said. And the moment you begin to change your mind from the fact that what I'm going through right now, I know God put me into this. I have had people say, I thank the Lord. I give him all the praise because he put me through all this sickness and disease and he brought me out. He didn't put you there. The devil put that into you. And you see, sometimes because God is a merciful God. Now, in the process, he may use it for one thing or the other, but he's not the originator of that. It doesn't have sickness. It doesn't have disease. So, how will he just put it on you? Now, if God puts sickness and disease on people, then it becomes a sin for you to go to the hospital. It's a sin for you to go to the hospital because you are trying to get out of God's training. So, but God don't use that. That's why he anointed doctors to, to step in where people cannot use enough of their faith to grab what God is giving them. Next question, please. Bishop. Yes. 
what really must I do to stay healthy? What is the one thing that I really need to do? Mm. Wow, praise the Lord. Now it's just like uh, the man that came to Jesus, I said, and he asked him, what do I need to do to have eternal life? Now watch this. One thing that you need to do is to believe. One thing, one thing. Every other thing is just wasting your time because there are no two ways to live the life God intend for you to live on earth physically spiritually financially emotionally maritally than to believe the word of the living God for you now listen the moment you know that God's word is not separate from God and you know that each time God speaks to you, that is the answer to the question. You are ready to live a life full of health. Let me show you something here. In Mark chapter 9 verse 23, Jesus said unto, unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Did you not just say that? And the scripture says, he said, the just shall live by faith. So, I want you to understand that this faith thing is not difficult at all. Because God is not asking you to believe in something that is abstract. He's asking you to believe what he says because that is what is coming from his heart. So, we are not talking about a doctrine. We are not talking about a movement. We are talking about the reality of what God says that is documented even in heaven because of you. So your faith grows the more you read the word of God, the more you have the revelation of what he's saying concerning you at a particular point in time and concerning a particular issue. Like I said the other time, faith in coronavirus came because people are talking about it. Everywhere you turn on the TV, on the radio, on the internet, everybody is talking about coronavirus. Before you know what is going on, coronavirus gained so much of I mean, root in the heart and the mind of people that people now believe so much in the reality of coronavirus because that is all what they are hearing all the time. Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. So if it is the word of God you are hearing the way you are hearing about how the virus is going everywhere, your faith will be so strong in what God is capable of doing and know what the enemy can do to you. Now hear this one. The Bible says in Mark chapter 6 and verse 1 and 2, the Bible says here, he said, And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing were astonished. Now, he said, in, he saying, From whence are this man these things? And uh, what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand? See that. But in verse 5, something happened. In verse 5, and he could there do no mighty work. Save that he lay his hands upon a few folks, a few sick folks, and he healed them. Now look at that. The one that came from heaven, the God of the whole heavens and the earth, could not do any mighty work. Why? Because they won't believe. You want to stay healthy, you have to stop believing everything that the scripture says concerning your life. Now, the Bible says in verse 6 of that same scripture, the Bible says, And he marveled, Jesus died marveled, because of their unbelief, and he went around about the villages teaching. Jesus died marveled. Now, why is he marveled? Because he was thinking, how can the creator be in the midst of his people? And yet they couldn't believe him. They can't believe that the one that put the dross together and make them human is with them. And they are still complaining of lack. They are still complaining of sickness and disease. And somebody said, well, I wish I was there. I would have believed. Now listen to this. He's stronger now than then. Because at that time, Jesus Christ was not yet glorified. At that time, Jesus Christ was not yet, I mean, he has not suffered. He has not laid down his life. He has not shed his blood. Now he shed his blood and is not only in Jerusalem. It's not only in New York. It's not only in Asia. It's not only in, uh, uh, in Africa. It's with you now. Wherever you are, either you are driving, you are sitting, you are, you are whatever, you, wherever you are on the earth right now, there is an invisible being that is laying his hand upon your shoulder, patting you at the back, 
telling you, my will for you is so that you, you are healthy. And I've discovered this over the years, that everyone that Jesus Christ healed, they had something. If you are not hearing the word of God on healing, there is no way you can develop faith for healing. The woman with the issue of blood, the Bible says, he heard about Jesus. It was what she heard that prepared the faith to mix up, saying, I have to touch this man. That is Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 29. He de she decided in her, in her heart, if ca I can only touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Now, she, she put all the effort in and she touched Jesus. And the Bible says that the blood, the flow of the blood stopped. Watch this. You don't need to travel to Jerusalem to touch Jesus. The word of the living God is Jesus in the print. Is Jesus. Hear me clearly. The word of the living God is Jesus in the print. The Bible says in the beginning, John chapter 1 verse 1 was the word. And the word was with God. And God is that word. The Bible says in, in, verse, in, 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 uh, in verse 2, John chapter 1 verse 2. And the Bible says, and the word, verse 2, verse 2 says, it says, and the word is with God. The same was in the beginning with God. And verse 3 said, verse 3 said, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything that was made, um, anything made that was made. And in verse number 14, he said, and the word was made flesh, and it dwelt among us. The word of the living God is a person. His name is Jesus. You can reach out to him right now. Somebody say, how do I get him? Now you get him in his word. You get him in his name. Call the name of Jesus. Break that thing and destroy whatever the enemy is putting upon you. He has nothing to do with your personality. He has something to do with the one that paid the price on your behalf. Every time you hear something about Jesus is healing the sick, put yourself there. You are hearing Jesus healing the sick. You are hearing him. I mean, destroy the power of oppression. You need to call out. Why not me? That is what faith is all about. You respond to faith. The woman had what Jesus Christ was capable of doing. And she responded. Why not me? She reached out, touched the hem of Jesus' garment, and the blood stopped. I don't care what they told you. We are stopping this thing today in the mighty name of Jesus because of his mercy, because of his glory, because of his love, because of his compassion. As I'm talking right now, I felt inside of my spirit that you need to come into a place whereby you said, today is the end. And I'm going to be praying with you. And I'm trusting Jesus, the son of the living God, is going to reach out to you. He's going to break that power. He's going to destroy that grip in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus because the price has been fully paid. This must not continue. I want you to release your faith as I pray right now. That inflammation, yes, is going out right now. That tumor is getting out right now. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you worship. We exhort you for the price paid on the cross of Calvary. Daddy, we have come to you, the owner of the whole universe. We are Karamotosia Kabatiza. It doesn't matter what the enemy owes. The Lord is saying to me, I should pray for you. Whatever is called pain in your body, I decree, come out in the mighty name of Jesus. Pain from gunshot, pain from affliction, pain from inflammation. Hear the word of the living God. I command you right now, get out in Jesus' mighty name, everything called tumor, every cancer, cancerous cells. Hear the word of the living God, because I can see this stripe on the body of Jesus, and because of that, you are no more permitted to carry sickness and disease in your body. I speak to your organs, I speak to your blood system. I speak to every part of your body that have been infected with sickness and disease. And I come against every grip of affliction in your body. I remove them completely in the name of Jesus. That body is the body at the temple of the Holy Ghost. Whatsoever is not glorifying God that is residing in your body, either in your heart, either in your kidney, in your liver, I command right now, get out in the name of Jesus. Every symptoms of coronavirus, I command you, die a permanent death 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing your people. I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Do you know what has happened? Jesus Christ just healed you. I want you to just begin to exercise your faith. I'm healed. I give you praise. Whatever you can do before, come and begin to do it. The glory of the Lord is upon your life in Jesus' mighty name. It's because he loves you and he can't stand you in pain. And listen to this. If you have been listening to me, and yet there is something you know in your life that is absent. You are not yet saved. I know sometimes you go to church. Sometimes you have heard about the gospel. But you have never surrendered your life to Jesus. He has never come to sit down completely in your heart. This is an opportunity for you to say, Jesus, I need you now. You need to cry out, Jesus, save me. I want you to pray this prayer with me. And the next thing will be, you will be a brand new person. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks because you love me. You died for me. On the third day, you resurrected. From today, I give my life to you. Write my name in the book of life. From today, I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are now a child of God. Now, you have to grow in this new life. You can just email us at media uh, at media at crepa.org media at crepa.org and uh, you can request for some information you can request from some material that will make you to grow in your new life and i believe that when we get to heaven i will see you there in jesus mighty name get this this is a glorious opportunity for you to prepare for 2021 if the foundation be destroyed what will a righteous man do 2021 is at the door don't allow the year to determine and dictate for you. You have every opportunity to determine everything by laying a solid foundation in the word of God. So this coming Sunday is our uh, wonder Sunday. We're going to begin to explore the word of the living God and we begin to pray and speak ahead to 2021 and take whatsoever the enemy is planted out of the year so that you can fully enjoy the blessing of god and don't forget tomorrow is another service 7 p.m join us then god bless you until next week when we meet again jesus is alive